Om Shri Sai Ram, offering our collective love and gratitude at the lotus feet of our beloved Sadhguru, Shri Matsudan Sai, respected elders, brothers, sisters, students, staff, and all the post-graduation boys who are here with us today, as indeed this evening is a very momentous evening for all of them and for this entire glorious mission of love and service. To this very batch of boys, when they graduated from the Center for Human Excellence and as they were getting their letters of internships, as they were being posted as interns, to the various campuses and the departments. At that time, Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba said, I'm preparing you all for a great mission. And what came after that was a beautiful story of how he was going to charter their spiritual growth. He told them, you need to remember four things. He said, four stages of merging with God, Salokyam, Samipyam, Sarupyam, and Sayuchyam. He went on to say that your first phase is now over as you've graduated from the Center for Human Excellence. And here, what did you do? You lived with God which was true education. Now, you're going to go as interns to the various campuses, and what happens at this stage? He said, you're going to live for God, which is devotion. He said, after this, you must progress to the next step, which is living in God, and then ultimately, a living God. He said to the boys at that time, don't ever forget that these are the four stages. Brothers and sisters, these 21 boys we have today had joined in 2014, and I distinctly remember these boys at that point in time when they entered the portals of the Center for Human Excellence, which was set up to mold young men and young women on this path of spirituality and on this path of service. And today, they're all here at the threshold. And from boys, they are in the process of becoming gurus. When we were in Kodaikina last month, Sadhguru spoke about how this is not a guru sishya parampara. He said, never for a moment think you are all sishyas. He said, this is a guru to guru parampara. I am making gurus out of all of you. He said, my guru made me a guru. And today, I am going to make each one of you as a guru. So not for a moment think that this is a guru sishya parampara. And ever since 2014, till this very day, from the time as Brother Madhusudan, the way he interacted, mentored these boys, hours after hours, days after days. And today, they have seen this beautiful metamorphosis of their elder brother into a Sadhguru and up close and personal, these boys have witnessed it. And therefore, that is the learning. 
they have taken and they have imbued and they have imbibed minute after minute, second after second, as they go about doing their daily chores. This is the greatest lesson each one of them have learned. We will begin this wonderful evening with a short video. Can we please have the video? Sathya Sai University for Human Excellence, the seed of which was Sri Sathya Sai Center for Human Excellence, it combined both Paravidya and Aparavidya in its curriculum. Looking at the first two batches of students, there has been great transformation since 2014 when they joined Sri Sathya Sai Center for Human Excellence. These students today have really become the first missionaries of Sri Sathya Sai Mission. So when the whole project started of CHE, our job was very simple, just to listen to what Swami said. So Swami was guiding at every stage as to what is to be done. The first year of graduation happened. Initially, we had apprehension. There will be enough number of students, whether there will be enough number of faculty, but they were all there. And they all came, right time, right place. What we had not realized was while infrastructure, uh, the number of students, everything was growing, the students were getting transformed. And we could not make out till the graduated students went to various campuses for internship. This university has imparted free values-based education, which has molded me into a better human being. Apart from imparting, academic excellence and various life skills, this university is providing me with the guaranteed employment wherein I can give back what I have received for the coming generations. Adding to education and employment, here we are also taught the highest form of the knowledge through Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads and various other scriptures which paves a way for our enlightenment. Sri Satya Sai University for Human Excellence is one such university that has a global outlook, indigenous approach, an ancient grounding and a modern panorama. As we graduate from the PG program, our Sadhguru, leading by example, has raised the bar even higher and has redefined this and has taught us that it is not just enough if we work for God, but the goal is to work as God. The transformation is intellectual transformation, spiritual transformation and moral transformation and definitely there is physical transformation also. Each of them, today you look at them, they are physically so fit and more importantly they have such clarity on life and the purpose of life. This university has made us excellent human beings by instilling compassion in us to serve the unserved. In this process, to realize and experience our own self. Today, we are at a milestone in our journey. Milestone never shows the distance that we have covered, but it shows only the distance that is to be traveled. We pray and hope our Lord and Master gives us strength to complete this journey and to reach the destiny. But largely I got you here to tell you what's coming next, what is your role. And don't please shortchange yourself with the idea that I'll handle a campus or I will uh, train a few students or do some research. And no, no, don't, don't do that. That's only a part of it, that's the service part of your life. The spiritual side of your life is, you're all masters in making and you will walk this earth as Vedanta Kesaris and people will watch it. It's a beautiful parampara, it is a new parampara, it is a guru to guru parampara. It is not a devotee disciple parampara. It is a guru, a master to a master. And this evening we will have two 
of the gurus in the making who will address all of us. We would first like to call upon Brother Shantagaur Biradar. He hails from Bijapur and when he had joined the institution at that point in time, Swami had told him that once you complete your education, I will post you at the Bijapur campus itself. And at that time, there was no Bijapur campus. And brothers and sisters, he's completed his MSc in Life Sciences, and he is being posted at the Bijapur campus as the deputy chairperson and deputy warden. Om Sri Sai Ram. Jnana Shakti Sama Roda, Tattva Mala Vibhoshita, Bhukti Mukti Pradatha, Chatasmai Shri Guraven Namaha. Offering our salutations to that Guru who is rooted in the wisdom, the power, and adorned with a garland of eternal truth, and who grants the joy of the physical world and also the liberation, we offer our gratitude to Him. Offering our prayers and gratitude to Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, bringing every one of us together and walking with us for some time and then handing us over to a noble and capable Guru who can show us and lead us to the light. Dearest Swami, respected elders, brothers, sisters, hearty Sairam to everyone. Today, when I stand here to speak, a lot of emotions comes out because I see a change in myself, a Shantagoda who spoke here in 2015 and Shantagoda who is speaking in 2022. It's not only my story, but every one of our story. It may be our PG brother who are passing out now and all of us who are sitting here, every one of us have transformed. All credits to Swami for making us evolve day by day. Today, when I stand here, I want to narrate how Swami brought change in me, transformation in me. It's not only me, it has happened with every one of us. I'm just taking my example here. It was in 2015, Swami was giving us our passports in Anandam. When my passport came, he, he was opening everyone's passport and seeing name and photo. When my passport came, there was written, it was Shanta Gauda. But Swami told Prashanta Gauda. That time he told Prashanta Gauda, not, being just Shanta is not sufficient. It should be Prashanta, he told. Then I was very young, didn't take it much seriously, I hope. The days passed on and then we graduated. We became interns at various campuses. Once I had an opportunity to serve Swami at Anandam, when I was serving, he told, your name is Shanta Goda, but you are not Shanta. You should try to become Shanta. So then I started wondering. Because when Swami told Prashanta, then I was a student. I was unable to identify what is that Prashanta. So now I am working. I have a people, situations. Then I started what is mean by Shanta. Being calm, not getting agitated. So I started understanding the meaning of Shanta and tried. In that process, I had a few drawbacks, lacunas. I was unable to manage few situations. Wherever I speak, it was misunderstood few times. I was finding it very difficult. I wrote to Swami once. Swami, I'm finding it very difficult. So he, he just smiled at me and told, do you know Mitabashi and Hitabashi? I told yes, Swami, you just follow that. Speak less, speak sweetly. Everything will be all right. So that started. So Shanta had started, then this Mitabhashi and Hitabhashi started. It was in 2019, Swami visited high school where I was working as an intern. The same time I was, serv I was serving Swami, at that time He told, now you have become Shanta, I am happy, He told. Then after, after food, Swami went to His room, He called me there and there was a head of the institution sitting there. So he started explaining, do you know who he is? He is one of the disciples of Durvasa. That's why he gets very quickly angry. Ang anger is at the tip of his nose. Then Swami told, now is that you have become Shanta, now we have to develop patience. Patience with people, patience with situation, and most importantly, patience with yourself. 
don't hurry he told and he also gave a token of love to keep me reminded that swami has given this token of love for me to remember that this is a symbol of patience i have to develop patience so that journey started so recently in kodai swami called suddenly he called me to speak when i was about to come to the place where swami was sitting in between he told he was very ashanta he became shanta now i think he has become prashanta when i went to at lotus feet swami asked have you become prashanta i told swami you have to tell me swami told how can i tell you have to tell whether you have become prashanta or not so after the, after that talk i i i contemplated for some time i have not become completely prashanta completely prashanta means one who is completely peaceful and joy from within not just outside pretending calmness and happiness but from within yeah, then i understood yes i have not become completely prashanta but i am much better than what i was because whenever i get agitated and frustrated with people it used to be a, a day or one and half day but after that it has become to hours i can come back quickly swami has told once if you want to check your progress of spirituality just check how much of time you take to come to your normal peaceful mind so that duration has come down it has shortened so this was the transformation how swami brought in me that patience and speaking lovingly and speaking less and becoming prashanta so today when i compare to that 2015 14 much better all credits to swami for bringing that transformation not just individual transformation he has brought as a group he has brought transformation in us he has brought that unity to think alike there are sometimes we are youths we will have a misunderstanding but that bond and love swami that has poured us poured in us we come back quickly and go speak to one one to one and solve the issues that bond he has brought in that group not just individual transformation he has made us capable and able just imagine passed out from our undergraduation he sent us to campuses he gave us a responsibility to play he had prepared us he had made us capable to handle and manage the campuses children whatever activity swami had given to us i don't think any student who graduates immediately people can the boy may have a capability but getting the trust that these boys will handle and giving responsibility to them i remember the most expensive thing in this world is trust people say swami had kept the trust in us and i hope we keep and maintain that trust that swami has kept on us when this transformation happened i want to tell it is not just individual transformation or a spirituality that, that has he has given to us but every comfort that a youth can think of in his age you you may think it may be our dresses it may be facility that we have around us it may be a traveling to various places swami made sure that whenever he went to countries he took us he, wherever he took us he clearly told don't think it is your picnic or a trip it's a learning tour for you education trip for you i am showing you the world their culture and my devotees how much they are doing for swami and how much they love the mission so he trained us in that way and every time swami spoke and after that sadguru spoke personally many times guiding us in various aspects through those talks discourses and training programs swami has made us capable there is a verse in sanskrit which says that which we cannot get from guru that cannot be taken or collected from anywhere in the world that guru is capable of giving everything and here is a guru who has given everything to us that is needed for our spiritual growth and also a material growth or a prosperity that we can think of to live happily with this he has entrusted Uh, trusted us and given so much of opportunity to grow and evolve ourselves and today we stand at a milestone in our journey there is lot that we have to cover and swami has given everything and it is a time now for us to give back to the society 
and offer it to Swami and do whatever He says and complete this journey. I pray at Swami's lotus feet that He gives us strength and guides us at every moment to stand up to whatever He has told us and whatever we have decided all through our life to achieve that. A Sarvagnya, a poet from Karnataka, in his three-line verse, he says, Kallu kallambuviri, kallalirpude daiva, kallalli kalenirisida daiva da swallalihudu daiva. So we all say stone, 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 and we find to, we try to find the divinity in the stone. Do you think the divinity is in the stone? No, 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 no. The divinity is not in the stone, but the divinity is in the guru who has given that kala or the energy to that stone. So we all were stone. He has bestowed that energy in us to become better, to be a replications of him. He has always told you, you should be a replication of me, that selfless love and selfless service. We are trying, to, we are trying our best, Swami, to become like that. We pray that you give us that strength and guide us to become like you. We offer our gratitude. Jai Sairam. We would now like to call upon Brother Snehil Naidu. He joined in the year 2014. He hails from Raipur in Chhattisgarh and has completed his MSc in Physics. He will be posted at the Gulbarga campus as the Deputy Chairperson and Principal. Om Shri Sai Ram. My most loving salutations at Swami's lotus feet. Respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, hearty sairam to everyone. Just a couple of days back, I was wondering, is it all going to get over? Now, we will no more be <coughs> the privileged students of Swami, you know. That thought suddenly occurred in my mind. And it's all going to get over. So, then Swami arranged for this event. And then I understood, it's not with Swami, there is never an end. <clears throat> Every end has a new beginning. With Swami, every full stop is followed by a new sentence. And not just a sentence, it just, it, it just it does not begin like that. It begins with a capital letter. So today is that day of, you know, that represents the capital letters in the new sentence of our lives. So what is going to be the new sentence of my life. Just now, Sister Bhuvana said, Swami is posting us as deputy chairman in every campus, and I, am, I have been given an opportunity to serve as a principal of Gulbarga campus. It, it was in 2014, Swami told this to me. I never understood. When I first met Swami in the year 2014, he said that I will make you principal. Who could ever imagine this? And today it is happening. Tomorrow I'll be posted as principal of Gulbarga campus. So in that interview in 2014, he had told me to join for course for BSc in Center for Human Excellence. I had never imagined in my life that I'll be doing BSc. I was not even knowing what I was going to do. Swami gave this guidance to me and he gave an opportunity to study BSc. As days passed, I learned a lot being in Center for Human Excellence and I was still trying to figure out what is my purpose. Slowly, I started to learn, of course, the curriculum and <clears throat> When we used to study together, I used to enjoy discussions. 
I used to enjoy sharing knowledge with the with, with my batchmates, and then I realized I have this interest of in I have this interest in teaching. Next, after the undergraduation, Swami posted me to Jaipura campus, and there I started teaching. There I really enjoyed teaching, and I discovered that. Teaching is for me. I I would have been a very bad engineer, or I would have been a very bad doctor. But teaching is something which really is very close to my heart, and I slowly discovered it. Similarly, as time passed, Swami then posted me to Bijapur campus, and it was like a next step, next step to me, for me. There, I faced new challenges. i had to lead at a few uh, at few times and it was not very easy for me sometimes i used to wonder what am i going to do i used to fear a lot and i used to keep praying to swami do this do that and i used to sometimes even break down saying that what is this happening i could not even bear little pain in my life but slowly 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 swami was always there he was always guiding he would always call us for internship reviews here he would he would always give solution to our problems and slowly he taught us how to do about go about doing things and we learned and that gave a lot of confidence to me and with swami it's never like he never lets you settle for something you know he will always push you to achieve something which is more than what you think you can do so i was of course when swami visited bijapur once he called me inside his room and he was he told me that now you have to come back for doing your masters so which subject do you want to do he asked me so i i was not very sure about which subject i should take up then he asked in which subject have you done your under graduation i said so i have done in mathematics physics and chemistry so then he asked do you like mathematics do you like physics i was like yes so i like both so which subject would you take he asked he asked i said so i whatever you want me to take you know sometimes we tell this to swami to impress him but we really don't mean this from our hearts we just tell him that swami whatever you say i will follow but we do, don't really mean it you know it has it has happened with every one of us so that was one time it happened with me i was not very sure about what i was supposed to do at the same time i was not very truthful when i said swami i will do whatever you say so at that time when he was deciding whether i should take up mathematics he said chemistry is not available so you will have to take either mathematics or physics and then he paused for a moment in that pause i understood that i should take up physics because i i prayed in my heart to swami that swami please say physics <laughs> and at that moment you know swami what he said he said take up mathematics <laughs> so i was like oh my god what should i do now then all that happened we came back for para vidya shivira and after that swami was starting this pg program in our in our university and then he called all of us and there he asked every everyone as to what subject they would like to take and then i was very <laughs> happy that swami is giving us the choice so i understood one thing from this it is very important for us to find our true purpose because today i may say something like i want to do this i i may not be sure about that but when i step into that i will realize no it's not for me so i cannot imagine myself doing mathematics so to be very truthful i enjoyed my masters in physics and specially the dissertation part 
which was a small research part in our masters. And I really enjoyed being in lab. So what I mean to say is, in every stage of my life, I discovered what I like because of Swami. Because he was having the steering wheel of my life in his hands. When I'm not sure about what direction I should go, what I can do, I can just hand over the steering wheel of my life in his hands. He knows where to go. He knows where to take us. So that is my experience in my life. And today I have understood the purpose of my life. I have understood it is my purpose in my, uh, the purpose of my life is education. To serve the society in the field of education is what I have understood in my little understanding. I may be wrong at this moment. But at this point in time, I feel this is what I can do the best. And it is not just like that it has come to me. It is because Swami was guiding all through and he made me understand this today. So, today I would like to thank all the, all my teachers, our director sir, all my brothers and all who have helped me in this self-discovery. And finally, I'd like to pay my heartfelt gratitude at Swami's lotus feet for everything. Thank you, Jai Sai Ram. May we now call upon Shri T. Venugopal, Registrar Evaluation, Dean Research and Innovation Council, and Director of the Mundanahalli Campus of the Sri Satisai University for Human Excellence to address all of us. He was formerly the Controller of Examinations, Director Research and Publications, Dean Arts and Humanities at the Kanchi University for 23 years. Sri T. Venugopal. Om Sri Shai Ram. Vinayena Pratayenaham Vidyam Bodhayame Guru Sadguru Margamanyam Najane Aham Bhavantam Sharanam Gataha Pranams at the Divine Lotus Feet of our beloved Swami and Sai Ram to all. I am recalling my bond with uh, this current set of PG boys. Just now, a while ago, Shanta Gauda, I'm sorry, uh, Prashanta Gauda was telling me, uh, sir, we are leaving soon and we will continue to be your students. I said him, we will continue to be friends. So let me explain how this bond developed by the grace of our Swami. So it was my early days here in this campus and one fine day the announcement was that the Swami will be gracing this building tomorrow. So I was just thinking what to do, with, how to do, how to go about the arrangements. Usually in uh, the previous institution we will run around, go for uh, the uh, helping fellows, we will outsource everything, we will go for uh, this vendor, that vendor. So I was thinking where to approach people, how to arrange this happen. Mm -hmm. But to, people told me it will be taken care. I was wondering how, who will take care of these PG boys did everything. They, I mean, without any guidance, they did everything. They knew exactly what to do. They arranged the function. Uh, everything, everything was perfect. Decoration, receiving Swami, everything was perfect on time. So when Swami arrived, he was looking where to go for the flower. The one boy suddenly brought a flower. Everything was perfect. So I got uh, that idea, okay, these boys are different. So they have developed interpersonal skills and they have developed uh, uh, even management, guest management, all that they have learnt. I uh, developed a certain, uh, what to say, a respect for them. That was at that level. Then, at a later date, uh, um, at the interview room, when Swami was talking something about these PG boys, 
he passed and he mentioned about the pg boys and passed and said they are dear to me he made like this his tone the love in his voice his compassion everything immediately got downloaded in my heart so they became dear to me from that to very date as dear as my son so it was one development then in another later date i was uh, we were my wife was there son was there i was trying to tell swami these boys are wonderful swami when compared to uh, the boys uh, of my previous institutions he immediately said you cannot compare our boys uh, these boys with them so maybe he felt it's uh, they are too far away you should compare them with me dear so that day so initially i thought these boys are good at uh, this arrangements administrative skills everything then it was clear to me though these boys are set to do phd their goal is already set by swami that they should be divine they are on the path to divine maybe few steps down so my respect love towards them grew much so to these boys are swami himself says they should compare them with me so they will be becoming gurus further gurus that be- became clear to me uh, that day then i was thinking well we are, i am going to deal with this divine boy so you know. how do i go about it i have other role to play administrative role to play at, uh, at another occasion swami told me clearly be firm but not strict be firm that not strict i will convey it to all the fellow teachers over here swami's message so that helped me at lot to move or move about with these boys so these are my memories with these boys i had occasions to move around with them i had occasions to go for a field trip with some of these boys and i had occasions to teach some of these boys directly these boys are entirely different i tell you they are very different and they are all set to become divine they are now posted in campuses for administrative purposes but soon uh, as swami wishes they will we will see them as gurus mm? and as of now i treat them as friends soon i hope to see them as gurus and uh, i request swami to i ex- i have experienced this so what is that so called unconditional love with these boys may not be with uh, everybody else but i bless uh, request swami to bless me with that unconditional love towards everybody and then my life will be entirely different when i felt very i feel very easy in the presence of these boys they were no different from me like that i used to feel so uh, let me grow further with the blessings of swami uh, to feel divinity in anybody and everybody so with this request uh, i close my brief talk saira may we now request the chancellor of the university shri b n narsimurthy sir to address all of us loving pranams at the lotus feet of sadguru shri matsudan sai who embodies in himself the divine master bhagwan shri satya sai baba very dear brothers and sisters and students boys and girls at the outset i would like to congratulate every one of every one of these 21 boys of course now there are no more boys they have become young men they have become men they have grown outgrown the boyhood and become men who have completed 8 years of discipleship 
at the feet of Sadhguru Sri Matsudan Sai and now are being sent out as young missionaries of the glorious, glorious mission of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, which is founded by Sadhguru Sri Matsudan Sai. Already you have heard uh, two of these uh, young men. They really represent our university. They are a testimony to the great missionary zeal of Sadhguru Madhusudan Sai, who envisaged this university. For any vision to materialize, a mission is required. Very aptly, the biography of founder of Sri Satya Sai Lok Seva Institutions, Madhyal, late Madhyal Narayan Bhatt, is captioned a visionary with a mission. Any vision will die with the visionary if there is no mission. In fact, vision is like the blueprint of a building on a paper. The mission is the actual building. A vision takes shape in the head and heart of one person, but for the mission to grow, for the mission to materialize, many people are required. The success of any mission, the success of any mission depends on the commitment and dedication of its followers. Any man or woman, young or old, who is dedicated to the mission is called a missionary. Especially the young missionaries are very, very important. If the mission has to succeed, that mission should have a self-generating mechanism of creating young missionaries on a perennial basis. Without that, the mission would come to its end during the, immediately after the pioneer or the founder of the mission. History records that Swami Vivekananda founded the Ramakrishna mission. Then what was the role of Ramakrishna? Did he not have any role in founding of the mission? Yes. It was Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa who molded and prepared Swami Vivekananda. Therefore, Swami Vivekananda could found the mission and uh, how gloriously the mission is spreading, has spread all over the world is a testimony to the grace of the Master in Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and dynamism and energy of the great disciple Swami Vivekananda. Sri Satya Sai mission is founded by Sadhguru Sri Matsudan Sai. I would like to say this with great emphasis. Then what was the role of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba? Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba molded and prepared Sadhguru Sri Matsudan Sai. In fact, Sadhguru Matsudan Sai is a masterpiece chiseled by Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. I was a very close witness to this chiseling of the personality of Sadhguru Sri Matsudan Sai from the days he was a student in Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning, starting with uh, Brindavan, and then he went to Prashanti Nilayam. Therefore, I would like to say with great emphasis and authority that Satya Sai mission is starting from here and not anywhere else. Why do I say this? 
suppose I was a young boy of 25 speaking this, you could have discounted it. I am nearly 80 years. When I say that, I have a reason. Because any mission will continue. For example, there were many great spiritual luminaries and leaders in India. But there are no missions after those people disappeared from the face of the earth. It is not to denigrate or belittle anybody. I have got great reverence for every one of them. The missions did not take off for a very simple reason. We have a mission of Jesus Christ. We have a mission of Buddha. We have a mission of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. At the same time, there is no mission of Mahatma Gandhi. There is no mission of Ramana Maharshi. There is no mission of Mahayogi Aurobindo. Why? If you are a keen student of history, you will see if the master has not chiseled young men and young women during his lifetime to represent him, to be images of little images of himself, to take the mission forward, the mission would die with the founder. Such young missionaries were not chiseled by those masters whose mission today does not exist in the world. Jesus chiseled those 12 young men. O fishers of men, come to me. I will make you not fisher, fishers of fish, but fishers of men. But for Saint Peter and Saint Paul, the Christian mission would not have been there. But for Swami Vekananda, Ramakrishna mission would not have been there. In the same way, but for Sadhguru Sri Mansodan Sai, Satya Sai mission would not have been there. I would like to say that. I may be misunderstood. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But this is the truth. This is the naked truth. I have seen how Sadhguru Matsudan Sai from 2014, how he molded each and every one of them. I know every one of them personally. The first batch of 22 boys, in fact, the mission started at Kodaikanal. In fact, the mission of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, which we thought had not taken off, was started in Kodakinal in May 2014, where these all the 22 boys were taken before they were admitted to Sri Satyasai Center for Human Excellence. How he, each and every one of them had changed, I know it. The very, the first speaker who spoke here, Shanta Gouda, was very angry with me in 2014, just before he got admitted to Center for Human Excellence. It is between him and me. Please don't question me or him. There is total transformation. There is total dedication. Can you think of a university which is the self-generating mechanism of producing young missionaries for a great and divine mission. Can you think of any university? There is no such university, I would say. This is the one and the only university which is the self-generating mechanism for this glorious Satyasai mission, creating young missionaries year after year. And they have a very great responsibility. Nobody is going to be, no body, physical body is going to be permanent in this world. In fact, at this point of time, I remember a wonderful sentence which was written by my mentor, Marial Naren, but in one of his last letters to me, he wrote that he had a premonition of his death, which happened a few years later. He was only 49 years old. He said, I am not worried because you are all there. 
Nobody is going to be permanent in this physical, phenomenal world. But the mission has to continue. Anybody may disappear. Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba physically has disappeared. Any one of us can disappear. But a great role and responsibility of these young missionaries who are going out into the world today is not just managing campuses, as was said by Sadhguru Sri Matsudan Sai. In their lifetime, each and every one of them should create and produce 100 young missionaries. The expansion of any mission depends not on money, not on funds. It depends on young men and women who are committed and dedicated to that mission. When the number of such young men and young women grows, the mission will expand. Then the question may be asked, where will the money come from? This is what exactly Swami Vivekananda meant when he thundered, give me 100 young, brilliant, selfless, dedicated men, I will shake up this world to its roots, he said. See, that is what is the power of a young man or a young woman who decides to dedicate his or her life for a divine mission, such a glorious mission. We are all very, very fortunate. In a way, it is a day of fulfillment for me. This is what I envisioned and prayed for every day of my life, every day of my life, after my mentor, Madhyan Lahan, but kindled this fire of this mission and vision in my heart. Every day, single day, I have prayed for it, and it is coming true. And what else, as a young man of 80 years, what else would you ask for? Thank you very much. <laughs> Swami, I'm very, very grateful to you that you came here first as the representative of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba, then became Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba himself, and finally, you embody and carry Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba in your personality. And this mission definitely requires the dynamism, professionalism, and uh, great energy that your young body of just 43 years holds. Thank you very much. Sairam. We will now have the handing over of the letters to the boys by our beloved Sadhguru. We'll call out the names of all the students. May we request everyone to kindly come up on stage. Mallinath Patil, he's completed his MA in Kannada and posted in the Bijapur campus and he's been posted as the headmaster. Shantagaud Biradar, he's completed his MSc in Life Sciences. He will be posted at the Bijapur campus as the Deputy Chairperson and the Deputy Warden. <laughs> Ravichand S, he's completed his MA in English and he will be posted here at Mudanhalli at the Centre for Training and Leadership Development as a lecturer and assistant manager of training programs. Bhattu Bhargav Sai has completed his MA in Sanskrit. He will be posted at the Gulbarga campus as the deputy chairperson and warden. <laughs> Snehil Naidu has completed his MSc in physics. He will be posted at the Gulbarga campus as deputy chairperson and principal. Niketan TC has completed his MA in Sanskrit. He will be posted here at Gurukulam at Mudanhalli as the Deputy Chairperson and Warden. <laughs> 
Sai Krishna has completed his MSc in Mathematics. He will also be posted here at Mudinhalli at the Gurukulam as the Deputy Chairperson and Warden. G. Venkatesai Anil Chandra has completed his MSc in Physics. He will be posted at the Hampi campus as the Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. Naveen Kumar R.A. has completed his MA in Kannada. He will be posted at the Hassan campus as a Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. Krushank K.V. has completed his MA in History. He will be posted at the Jaipura campus as a Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. G. Pardha Saradi has completed his MA in History and will be posted at the Karwar campus as Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. <laughs> Prakash M. has completed his MA in History and will be posted at the Koppal campus as Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. Gaurav M. has completed his MA in Sanskrit. He will be posted at the Mandya campus as Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. <laughs> N. Dilip Kumar has completed his MA in History and he will be posted also at Mandya as a Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. Jeevan S. has completed his MSc in Life Sciences. He will also be posted at the Mandya campus as Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. <laughs> Prabhoda Manas Y. has completed his MA in English and he will be posted here at Mudenhalli as a Deputy Chairperson and the Deputy Warden for the Senior Secondary. Bhanu Prakash A has completed his MSc in Life Sciences and he will also be posted here as, at Mudinhalli as a Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. <laughs> Dhruva Ullas BR has completed his MA in History. He will be posted at the Shivamoga campus as Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. D. Satyagopal has completed his MSc in Mathematics and he will be posted at Tumkur campus as a Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. We have Akhilan SR next who has completed his MSc in Physics and he will be posted at Udupi as the Deputy Chairperson and Deputy Warden. Nagabharna N, MSc Mathematics. He will be posted at the Mysore campus as a Deputy Chairperson and the Deputy Warden. <laughs> On behalf of all of us, may we now please pray to Sadhguru Shri Matsudan Sai to bless us all with this benedictory message this evening, Sairam. 
the joy of a farmer who has toiled to till the soil remove the weeds sow the seeds wait for the rains nourish and protect the crop and finally ready to harvest it is mine today a barren land turned into a rich harvest of such men of sterling character is a great sight for all to see a few years ago these were just young boys still not sure what's coming their way actually none of us were sure what was coming our way but we blindly followed in implicit obedience and faith whatever whatever was told and that faith has done miracles and these are some sample miracles for all to see and there are many in making right behind you but in their own good time shri madiyal narayan bhat as we all know him very dearly as anna he had this vision he had this dream and the setting was that of a rural hinterland in karnataka and it was just the time around which independence struggle was going on a young boy his heart bled at the plight of the country and his countrymen and unlike so many others who looked around and resigned it to their fate saying nothing can be done about this country he decided to do something about it and do you know the first sacrifice he made at that young age was to choose to be a teacher not very glamorous thing to do when you are born to a rich landlord who can send you anywhere including overseas to get a good education but he decided to be a teacher and became a principal of the village school headmaster as they say in early 20s like these boys are going to become now and he set the trend and he worked very hard and he realized that while he worked in a government setup there are several limitations he cannot fulfill all the dreams that he has because his hands are tied so he decided to embark on a mission of education through which he wanted to transform the society and his only reason for starting the education institution was to prepare men and women of sterling character commitment dedication and devotion who would withstand the tyranny of flesh and the temptations of the world and stand tall head and shoulders above the rest to build a nation where everybody would live in harmony and peace nobody would struggle for two square meals a day nobody would be denied an opportunity to get education nobody would have inaccessibility to health care women men all will live as equals and the country would be an example for the rest of the world he derived inspiration from the likes of mahatma gandhi ramakrishna paramahamsa even saint aloysius and the christian missionaries and he thought why can't we build a mission of our own which never existed before while on one side the missionaries which were totally steeped into indian philosophy were generally leading to people taking to the path of monkhood but he thought that would not be the solution to the problem of this country we need men and women 
who are sages in their mind but servants of the society in their bodies and so he borrowed that clarion call which swami vivekananda gave which became the motto of shri ramakrishna mission over a period of time atmano mokshartham jagat hitaya cha for one son emancipation and for the welfare of the world let us work and till his last he worked he toiled day and night resources were scarce believers were few opposition was plenty and the, the path was fraught with difficulties and obstructions and he found a refuge in bhagwan shri satya sai baba when his human spirit was weakening against the difficulties that he was facing to run a small school his boat came to the shore of the feet of bhagwan shri satya sai baba and he surrendered he surrendered to that great divine power which was represented by bhagwan shri satya sai baba all that he had done and he was longing to do a farmer must be patient he must wait for the right season so it early it won't happen so it too late it won't happen again so bhagwan shri satya sai baba in his own divine wisdom waited for the right time right season and that unfulfilled dream of narayan but to which bhagwan shri satya sai baba assured devaki was here a while ago and her mother who were distraught and crestfallen after the sudden demise of Nar- madiyal narayan but it is baba who placed his hand on mother's head and said narsimha murthy is a witness to that marvelous moment when mother was worried how will this mission continue who will look after this mission after narayan but and he said don't worry i am there not 60 not 600 not 6000 60000 tyaga jeevis will come the divine had spoken and can it fail no there can be delays but not denials and for a long time for decades all the tyaga jeevis here including narsimha murthy wondered will that word ever come true and with the demise of bhagwan shri satya sai baba himself it seemed like this was just a wishful thinking and that has that has come to an end now who knew that after this full stop like snehil said a new sentence was to begin a glorious sentence in the history of mankind and there started this mission nobody knew what was coming only the divine but by submitting oneself selflessly and completely to that divine will look what has been achieved i know there are not even 60 at, as of now but in another two batches there will be more than 60 and soon there will be 600 6000 60000 and even beyond and it is happening right in front of our eyes and we are such fortunate witness to this unfolding of a great mission that is set to change the course of human history and some day a decade down the line when we look back at this moment while we were seated in premamritam and we were witnessing all the happenings we would proudly remember that we were very fortunate to having to have witnessed it first hand a decade down the line this mission will be somewhere who knew decade before that this is what is going to happen today we are, we are we are just in the middle of this mission it's much more to happen in the next 10 years but when madhya lanar but left his body he left with a sense of anxiety because he had seen that what he wanted was not happening 
at least in front of his eyes when he was alive. He was pained, he was agonized, and he would often write to Narasimha Murthy about his plight, that there is no one to take up this mission of mine. I don't find people around me who are so dedicated and devoted as me. And then he pinned all his hope on Narasimha Murthy and said, I hope you will do it. But Bhagavan Sri Sathya Sai Baba had other plans. He took him with himself to Puttaparthi and Whitefield and finally brought him back a full circle into Mudden Ali, not without a reason. Because that desire of Nar Narayan but was still to be fulfilled. And that is now being fulfilled. A Bhagirati is required to bring that Ganges down. Shiva will support. Shiva will not bring it down. Shiva will support the flow of that Akasha Ganga onto the earth to quench the thirst of parched and the suffering. But a king Bhagiratha who can do tapas, leaving his kingdom, comforts, conveniences, and in those great Himalayan caves, he will pen do penance to bring that river down, which will be forever. That is the story of Narayan Bhatt and Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. And I have no apprehension, he's saying, I remember all my past. I also can peep into the future, but I do it very less because who wants to know the end of the movie? It spoils the whole plot. And I often time wonder, why am I, why I get anxious when things don't go the way it's supposed to go? And then I recollect, this is not from this birth. The vestiges of unfulfilled dreams and the fears of it failing lingers somewhere deep down in the subconscious. And therefore, even a little imperfection is intolerable to me. And so when university was to be set up, we were searching for a motto and a lot of universities have very wonderful mottos. They borrow it from the Upanishads and the Vedas. But we took it from Bhagavad Gita. And it said, Yogaha, Karmasu, Kaushalam. And everybody asks, what is Kaushalam? Is it excellence? Is it better version of what it is? No, perfection. I said, it is perfection in action. It's not just a better action than before. It is the best action, the perfect, which cannot be bettered anymore. And that perfection happens in human when they realize their divinity. Anything less than that is not perfect. It may be the best version of what you have ever done before. It may be the better thing than all the students of other universities. But it is not the best. Perfection is happ happens to us when we realize our divinity and all our humanness disappears. That is perfection. And such a person who is steeped in that knowledge of the divine self, whatever he thinks, says or does, everything is perfect. Even though for a common eye it may appear to be imperfect, but in his own wisdom it is perfect. So these boys journey doesn't stop with doing, they doing post-graduation. This is just on the way, as Shanta Goda very beautifully said, it's a milestone. But this is not the destination. Miles to go before I sleep. They have miles to walk forward. And till when they should walk? Till they become one with their divine self. Till Shanta becomes Prashanta, the journey does not end. And that is the journey of each one of us. And these missions are just mechanisms to achieve that. Nothing more than that. Once you perfect yourself in that divine wisdom, everything will happen on its own. And I need people who are like that, who are striving for that perfection. And nothing, they will settle for nothing less than that perfection. I need such young men and women for whom life will be effortless. This mission will be effortless because their very presence would take care of everything. They don't have to necessarily go out and do anything. Their very presence will initiate projects, will inspire people, will attract the resources that it needs, will do everything. That presence itself is so powerful when you are perfected. And that is something that I expect out of all our students, especially these. And I'm so glad that they have understood this purpose. And they will fulfill their destiny in their own way. I'm very sure of that. And in the process, they will take so many across. 
no policy has been able to change our country. Policies are as good as its implementation, as they say. Just now, IT people came with an IT policy document, and one page on top was empty. Message from Sadhguru Sri Madhusudan Sai. I said, what is this for? He said, no, you give some message for this policy, or the IT policy. I said, for all policy, I have only one message. Please follow the policy. <laughs> Don't keep printed and keep it in the cupboard. Following the message is the way. And each one of them have changed. I know them all. I have had many fights, many arguments. I have even punished them at times for not following certain things. But in their good interest. Not out of any hatred or any anger. But the agony of the farmer, the agony of the sculptor, the agony of the teacher, when the student or the pupil is not paying attention. Bhagavan would say, I am the Nataraja, the great dancer. I only know the agony of teaching every step of the dance. So today is, oh, today all that agony has given way to ecstasy. Ecstasy of seeing them dance, step in step, to the perfection of that teacher, the divine dance. And that's what is happening now. I feel so very more powerful today. I feel I have grown more hands, more heads, more hearts. I feel so much more empowered. <laughs> you know, I often wonder what happened in the earlier lives should not happen again. The passing of the founder, as Narasimha Murthy was saying, should not lead to full stop of the mission. It should continue perpetually. And what should I do to ensure that it happens? Is the question that always haunted me. Should destiny snatch me away untimely? What should be the fate of this institution, these children, all the people around? This is a question that I often put, put to myself. And the only answer I found is that it's not in accumulating a lot of money and putting in endowment funds. That's not going to make sure that this will continue forever. That may help, but it's not the reason why it would continue. The only way this will continue when we have enough and enough of these kind of men and women who will dedicate themselves, commit themselves to this cause of upliftment of their fellow beings and realizing their own divinity. Nothing less than that would suffice. And I see them all at this young age achieving such great spiritual heights which is unthinkable in these present times. And I feel so comforted in their presence as they feel comforted in mine, that we are there for each other. When they need me, I am there. And when I need them, in the sense the mission needs them, they are there too. And I would like to convey my gratitude to their parents who willingly lovingly surrendered them to this mission. For without their noble hearts, these children could not have taken to this path. Some of them did fight with their parents and come here, but now the parents are the happiest. When they see them blossom into such wonderful human beings, the parents feel fulfilled. They are also joyful. Any amount of speaking will not do justice to the happiness that we experience today. When I see this first batch of missionaries are setting their foot into the mission. Till now they were interns, they were students, they were so to say apprentices, but today they are missionaries. The transition has happened, it's different. Today they have a purpose, they have a responsibility, they have a vision and a mission to carry forward. And each one of them will definitely succeed in whatever they are trying to do because they have all the power of God with them. I used to often tell them a story when I used to meet them earlier when they were kids, kids in the sense, five, six years or eight years ago. I used to tell them, have you, have you watched this cartoon Tom and Jerry? All of, all of us know Tom and Jerry, right? Quite fascinating. Never it has happened that, that Tom could catch the Jerry and eat him. 
they keep running and fighting and they never, it has never happened that the Tom could catch Jerry. Somehow he escapes. You know the reason? The reason I used to tell these boys is that the Tom is running for his food, whereas Jerry is running for his life. And that's why Jerry always outsmarts Tom. Don't work in this mission for your food. Work in this mission as your very life. Then miracles will happen. This is not employment, this is not education, this is enlightenment. And like Jerry, if you keep thinking that this is your life and you must have it, you will go to any extent to sh make sure that this mission continues. But if you become like that Tom, if I find food, it's fine, I'll say, okay, I'll go hungry for a day. This mission will stop. This has to be your very live breath. You should think, eat, breathe, sleep, walk, talk, this mission in your life, which is Atmano Mokshartam Jagathitaya. You must grow spiritually and also must help others grow, both materially and spiritually. It's a long way to go, it's just the beginning, but it's a good beginning, as they say, well, begun is half done. So we have begun well, and we are going to have our first convocation of the university on the Guru Purnima of this year, in keeping with the tradition of Indian education system of the Gurukulas, where Guru Purnima would be the day when graduates would offer their gratitude to the Guru. Of course, Guru Dakshina, but I don't expect any material Dakshina, I only expect spiritual Dakshina and a commitment, a word of commitment from them and their parents. And at the same time, a new fresh batch of students were admitted into the Gurukula system. Both used to happen on the Guru Purnima day. So in keeping with the tradition of India, we are celebrating the first convocation of the university on this Guru Purnima, which is on 13th of July in the afternoon. And this is going to change the way Indians have lived and that would change how the world lives. Sometimes it may think that I am I'm being a little exaggerating, but no, I am not exaggerating. I am telling uh, the facts as it is. You will see the after effects of it, maybe decades down the line. Maybe you and I won't be there to even witness that, but the world will be there. And they will know what we have done for the betterment of the world. So this is what our mission is all about and they know it very well. I feel very proud of everyone who has worked for this mission from the days of the year. It feels like millennia ago when we started this. So much has happened. So much has happened every single day. So I'm very glad that this has happened and because they're all going to go to their various campuses and 10th June is when their dissertation ends and with that they complete their post-graduation. So we thought we will take this opportunity to celebrate this event with all the brothers and sisters, the devotees and the students because it's a very important milestone, it's a very, very important milestone in this mission. And I, I want to see that this number only grows. And if we were told 60,000, we should do more than that, right? We should do more than that. That should be our effort. Let everybody, Krunvanto Vishwamaryam says our Vedas, let everybody become noble. That is our goal. Through you, many more will get benefited, inspired, they will get transformed. And like how the magnet transforms a piece of iron into magnet, and then that piece of iron can transform another piece of iron into magnet. How one can light one lamp through another and many more lamps through that flame. That is the mission, it should spread to everyone until the last person in the world is transformed. This mission does not end. It does not end with me, it does not end with you. It only ends when every single person in the world has become better, has realized divinity, and the world is truly become as the creator of it had desired it to be. Till then our work continues, but it's a joyful work. Do with love, do with joy. Difficulties will come, obstacles will come. But as I said, I am there and you are there. And to them, I leave them with a very sweet note. This has touched my heart from the Bhagavad Gita. I did not read Bhagavad Gita fully. You know, here and there it's okay. But this one shloka I came across, which I never read before, where 
suddenly Arjuna realizes this Krishna is not just his playmate. He is not just his friend and cousin. He is not just another ordinary king. He is the supreme. He realizes this after several chapters into Bhagavad Gita. And then he surrenders to Krishna and says, Tasmat pranidhaya pranamya pranidhaya kayam. Therefore, I surrender to you. I fall flat at your feet. Sashtanga. Prasadaye twam aham isha medium. Please be pleased with me because I have troubled you a lot. I have bothered you a lot all these years without realizing who you truly were. So please be pleased with me. You are my Lord. I realize it only now. And he says, forgive me for my follies. And how beautiful he says. He says, Piteva putrasya sakheva sakyuhu priya priyayaha arhasi deva sodhu. He says, forgive me for all that I did wrong. How? Like a father forgives his son. Like a friend forgives his friend. Like a lover forgives his beloved. So to these students, I want to tell, I will, when you become a son, I will be with you as a father. When you become a friend, I will be with you as a friend. When you become my beloved, I will be your lover. I will always be with you at all times. <laughs> and never leave your side. You are dearest to me. In fact, you are not different from me. You are me and therefore I, I love you all so much. And in that love, we will find our destiny. We will fulfill our destiny. We will find our purpose and goal. Let this love spread, this brotherhood, this fraternity spread amongst all the students and staff. And let us all work together as hundreds of bodies but one heart. Let us work with that idea, with these blessings. I conclude today's program which was a special event and it's become truly, truly special on this day. I'm very happy.